So in the end, this is what you're going to submit. You're going to submit value scales with hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, practicing the eye on the scratch board, and then some cross contour. So we're going to do these pretty quickly. Um, your goal is to try to do some cross contour on your own, um, as well as the eye. The cross contour is an extra credit assignment, 2.5A, that's inside Schoology. Um, and the eye, we're going to kind of get you started on that, and the rest you can do on your own. So to start with, I'm going to run out of scratch board, so I'm going to do some practice ones right next to here, and then just kind of describe over there. All right, so to start with, we are going to start with hatching. And remember, hatching are just straight lines. So I'm using my scratch board tool, and I'm using this as the scratch board. So it's already a black surface. I use the tool to scratch away to the white. So I'm starting with just some straight lines. Now, since scratch board is dark, you can't ever make it any darker. You're only making it lighter. So you need to be careful when you start this by just doing a few lines. And to keep it dark, I'm just spreading the lines out. So I start with fewer lines. Then I go back and I add in more lines. As I get towards the bottom, I just stop. And now you can see it's really starting to change. A few more lines and I stop. And the more I add, the brighter it gets. Your goal is to get a nice smooth gradation. So you can see how many lines I have in here and how it fades down here to black. So I'm going to tilt this so it's a little more comfortable for me and just start to really add in those lines. So I'm going to do a lot and then as I move down I just start to do fewer and fewer and fewer and I space them out. And I want this to have a nice smooth transition. That is what a gradation is, it's a gradual change from light to dark. So now that I have this pretty much started, notice it didn't take me very long, so I'm chatting with you. I want some nice mid-tones, some dark value, and some bright. So now I'm going to take the tool, I'm going to go on the edge. So right, I was on the tip, right? Now I'm moving my hand back and putting the, make, making the tool flatter. And I'm using the side of the tool to scrape away some bright white. Get it completely empty. But notice how it's a big, abrupt change. So I want to go in with my tool then and blend even that so it slowly has a gradual change. What's that called? A gradation from light to medium to dark. That's it. Now you would do the same thing with the cross hatching. So that was our hatching. This is our cross hatching, but we're going to do lines in a different direction. And again, this won't take very long. So you can do this right along with me. So I'm starting with my hatching lines. And what do I do? I spread them out. I start with just a few. I can't ever make it darker. I only can make it lighter. So I start with a few. I can add more to get that mid-tone, that mid-value. And I stop so I don't ruin the dark. Add some more to get a lighter gray. And again, I stop and add some more to keep brightening it up. So I'm only going to do about this much when I'm doing cross-hatching because I want to switch to other directions. So in cross hatching, the lines cross each other. And so now I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to go on a diagonal. But the same rules apply. I start with more and I go towards less. And actually, remember, I always start with less and then I add more. Why? Because I can always make it lighter, but I can't make it darker. I do more and then I'm going to stop here again because I'm going to try a different direction. I'm going to try diagonal the other way. So I start with a few. Oh, notice that. Then I get to more. And this is where you should really see it starting to brighten up. And I do less when I want it to make gradually change. What do we call that? A gradation. Gradual change. I want to blend. And then I can even try vertical. And I really like the vertical, honestly, at the end, because it lets me stop the lines where I need them to stop. I like that as my last one. I usually do vertical last. You decide. But you should start to see this really lovely gradation happening. And you can go back in any direction you need, adjust, brighten things up. Again, I can put the tool on the side 
and scrape out some white. But I don't want to leave that chunk there. I want to blend. So I'm blend. I might even have the tool on the side as I blend just to get some bolder marks until I can see it completely blending in and nothing else changes, okay? I want this nice gradual change. Last one you're gonna do is stippling, which are the little dots. And I am not gonna stand here and do this one a third time, but I will show you what it should look like. Fast forward, there we go. Hatching, cross hatching, stippling. You do not have to do the full line of stippling because it will take you some time. But I want you to do at least a little bit so you can see how to make a gradation even with stippling. It doesn't take forever, but it does definitely take longer than these two. When you are done, I want you to try the eye using those techniques. So if I zoom in close, you're going to see I did do a little bit of stippling right here on the inside of the eye. I did some hatching and then some cross hatching inside. I did some hatching for these eyelashes. Notice how I have some gray gradually changing into the white. My gradation is in there. My gradation is in here too. So you wanna be pretty detailed with that. All right, I just want you to practice that on the scratch board so you can apply the techniques to something real. We have the eye, you've done the eye on the paper. Now I want you to try the eye on the scratch board. Now let's jump ahead into the cross contour. So do those things, hit pause, come back. We are gonna try the cross contour. Now what I was showing in class is that cross contour allows us to define the form so we can start to see the shape and the curve of things. This doesn't really have any shape, this flat surface. It's good for flat things, maybe like a sky and a sunset, but it's not good when I want to do something round like a spoon. And if you look at my drawing, can you tell which direction the spoon was facing when I was drawing it? And it's all because of the lines, which we call cross contour. Now cross contour says if I was following the form and I had a string and I wrapped it around, what would that string do? This object starts low, goes curves up higher, and then comes back down low. So my lines do that. They curve up and then come back down. From side to side, lower, higher, lower, lower, higher, lower. On the inside, the lines curve the other direction. They curve down and then up. So I curve my lines down and then up. This curves up, my lines curve up. This part, the handle, is straight. So my lines can be straight here. But this is really going to define your form. So let's flip my spoon back over. And tilt on the side so you can kind of see that little part here. It bends down. So I want my lines to bend down. And I do these sort of curved lines to give you an idea of what is happening with my object. And it makes your object look more realistic when you cross contour and follow the form. So I curve these lines over just like the spoon goes up and over. The spoon sideways goes lower, higher, lower. So lower, higher, lower. And I'm drawing these lines as if I was following the form. Now, I have not made some adjustments for value in here yet. You can see like where there's bright spots, where there's shadow spots. I am just doing the cross contour so you can see what those lines look like versus curving inside the spoon this way. When I do this in a sophisticated way, I am making those adjustments for shadows and highlights. Shadows and highlights. See my thumb? Boom, there's my thumb. All right, I was just sketching out my little mustache sticker on my thumb. And I was trying to leave those dark lines for the creases and highlights for where it's brighter. So let's try that with just one cylinder, okay? That's what cross contour is. Remember there is a tutorial specifically on cross contour in there as extra credit. You can follow that one. It gives you a lot more information. But let's just do a cylinder really quickly together. On the top, I was using my glue stick. So the shape of the object is round, so I can start by doing my lines around. I say a frown and a smile, a frown and a smile. But this object is also flat. It goes straight across. It's completely flat. So this is where my lines can be just straight diagonal lines because the object is flat there. I might also add more lines to do my gradation and brighten up wherever the light source is. And do some lines there and then wipe that away. 
okay? Just like you can see here, brighter into darker. I am trying to make my gradations here. Now my glue stick is straight vertical and then it's curved. So I think where that string would wrap around. So the sides are simply verticals. So I can do that. And remember I do fewer lines because I can always add more. And then I add in more. And I do this so that I have my gradation. And I'm trying to fill my space from top to bottom. And then let that fade into the darkness. Or have the darkness fade into the brightness. So that is just hatching. But remember, we're doing cross contour. So what would happen if I wrapped a string around and it would curve like a smile? On the bottom, it's a smile. That string would curve like a smile. And I start with just a few. I can then go in and I can add more little smiles. Let them go across if I need it to get brighter. But I'm using the length of this line to add more value and add more brightness on these edges. But I'm still letting them be little smiles. I'm still doing a cross contour. I'm following the form. They're curved lines because my object is curved. I can go back and add some more vertical lines if I want. Wipe away the dust, see what I have. And I'm blending back and forth with those two lines. Now what I'm not doing is I'm not doing diagonal lines because that doesn't make sense for this form. I'm always following the shape of the form. Notice here my lines were always curved because this part of the spoon is curved. So follow that tutorial if you want extra things um, on cross contour. But your assignment to turn in is going to be three styles, three techniques of scratchboard. Stippling, hatching, cross hatching. Practice those techniques on the eye and try the cylinder. One, two, three. Extra credit for an object if you want to do that, okay? My extra credit on this page, I did my one, my techniques, two for my eye, three for the cylinder, extra credit.